Thank you for joining us this Wednesday evening for our devotionals. If you want to go ahead and flip to our scripture tonight, it's going to be in Luke chapter 4. Really quick, normally we'd be having our prayer service tonight. So if you would, after this video, just join us in prayer for the three things we normally pray for. The needs of our people, our missionaries. And right now we have several missionaries struggling with COVID-19. And we just pray that you would pray with, join us and, and pray with them for healing and wisdom from the doctors, as well as our missionaries around the world that have been affected by this. And then also for our church and just our services going forward. And that you would just join with us uh, as we pray for those three things. As always, if you haven't already, go out and subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can uh, get all the notifications for Wednesday Devos and our Sunday morning services. Uh, if you haven't already, go back and watch uh, Pastor Gary from this past Sunday as he did week two of our sermon series that we started, The Sacrifice. It's a great word, so I encourage you to go back and watch that. But as I was driving this week, God really just put on my heart um, just um, a passage that I feel like applies to all of us right now as we're as we're in a state of constant change. And and if you're like me, you don't have dance anymore. I don't dance, but my daughter doesn't have dance. She doesn't have soccer. And it's really given us a lot of free time. It's easy to kind of push things off or say, oh, I, I can do that tomorrow. And and we're, we're constantly thinking that maybe we can just do this instead of doing that. And, and we just have all this free time. And because of that, I, I just this passage really stuck out to me, and you're probably familiar with it, but again, it's Luke chapter 4. This passage comes right after Jesus is baptized and right before Jesus' first public remarks in his ministry, the Sermon on the Mount. So let's read it. It says, And Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness. For forty days, being tempted by the devil, and he ate nothing during those days. And when they were ended, he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. And Jesus answered him, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone. And the devil took him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time and said to him, To you I will give all this authority and their glory, for it has been delivered to me, and I give it to whom I will. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. And Jesus answered, It is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. And he took him to the Jerusalem and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to guard you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. And Jesus answered him, It is said, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. And when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. And in this passage, we see Jesus fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. And when we look at Jesus' situation, I think it's something that we can all apply to our current situation. We're kind of in this spot where uh, we, we're, we're in self-isolation, we're, we're social distancing, and we're trying to, to be apart from people. And we're, we're faced with problems that in the business of life that we're so accustomed to, we don't, we don't have to deal with certain things or be tempted by, by the amount of free time that we have. And as you find yourself struggling with that, I think that there are some things that we can see, A, how Satan attacks, but also how Jesus dealt with it. The first thing we see happen here is Satan attacks at an opportune time. Jesus has just been baptized and he's, he's headed up to, to the wilderness to spend time alone with God. The fact that Jesus went 40 days and 40, 40 days without food and water is miraculous. I don't know about you, but I, I like to snack. And so the fact that he was there, he was probably hungry. And we see Satan attack Jesus at a moment when he was weak, at a moment when he was probably vulnerable. And I think that's important, right? Satan bides his time until you and I are vulnerable to strike. And I think that right now we're pro we've probably never been as vulnerable as we are right now with, with fear and those things. And, and, and that's when Satan likes to strike. And then the second thing he does is Satan subtly mixes truth and error in an attempt to deceive us. You see, Satan proceeds to offer all of his domain and all his glory to Jesus. He says, it has been handed over to me and I give it to whomever I wish. All Jesus has to do is bow down before him. And we see later in scripture, Jesus says, call Satan the ruler of this world. Now, Jesus tells us that we're not of the world, that we're with him. And so he's saying he's the ruler of this world and, and, 
And as we know, the Bible is also clear. Satan smartly alludes to it even here that God alone grants authority to whomever he wills. At best, Satan's authority, it's, it's delegated and temporary. It's not, it's not a permanent thing. And so Jesus answers it very clearly. He says, to God alone, that God alone is to be worshiped and served. Satan takes a little bit of truth and he mixes it with a little bit of his, of error and tries to get us to believe in it. And so during this time when things are changing and things like that, it's real easy to maybe be deceived by something that you perceive is true, but really has some, some lies in it. And so it's just important that we, that we stay connected to God during this time. And then it says this, Satan promises pleasure, but he doesn't mention the inevitable pain that will follow. Satan's quick to tell Jesus and show Jesus the pleasure that he will be, he, he could be in charge of all things. But what he doesn't mention are the consequences that follow. Sure, you have this need and, and, and here it is. This will fill that spot. But what he doesn't tell us is the pain that is sure to come. He says, worship me and it will all be yours. What he doesn't mention to Jesus is that if he does that, the union between him and God will be broken, that he will then become a slave or a servant of Satan. It's real easy to see the, the instantaneous pleasure that certain things can bring, but we don't, it, it's not, we don't always see the, the, the consequences that come. And that's, we talk about, talk to Ainsley all the time about natural consequences. When you, when you touch a hot iron, you're gonna burn yourself. And so there's consequences and, 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 and reactions that come to those choices that we make. And Satan's real quick to show us the pleasure without ever telling us the pain that's gonna follow. And then this, he says, Satan, or the last thing we see is that Satan tries to get us to meet legitimate needs or goals in illegitimate ways. Jesus is obviously hungry. Again, I snack all the time. If you give me a bag of chips and I start watching a show, I will eat all of it in that moment. Satan in all three of these temptations tries to, to get Jesus to act independently of God. He tries to get Jesus to do something on his own. Yes, they're legitimate needs. Yes, he's hungry. But Satan's trying to get him to meet it in illegitimate ways. You and I have to be careful to not only pursue godly goals, but to use biblical means of attaining them. What may seem innocent in this time of social distancing, what may seem innocent in that we just want to interact with people, maybe it's on Facebook or through a text message because we're trying to do that, it can it can be an illegitimate way of fulfilling that need and, and things will happen out of that. And so we have to be careful that the needs that we have, we're allowing God to fill those, that we're not looking to other ways and things. And so that's how Satan attacks. But I want to look at, there are five things that we can see that Jesus did to deal and overcome this temptation. The first one is this, be alone with God. Long before social distancing was a thing, Jesus practiced it. We see it all the time. Jesus would go off separate from the disciples, separate from the groups, and he would spend time with Jesus. He would use that time to re-energize, to refocus. And I would encourage you, as maybe you have a little more free time than usual, take that time. When it's easy to pick up your phone or, or watch some old things on the DVR, take that time. Start a new, a new reading plan on you version. Do, do something. Grab a book, read it. But do something to be alone with God. Just instead of filling that with, with mindless, needless things, be alone with God, re-energize, refocus, so that when, when you make it through this, you are ready to hit the ground running. The second thing is this, be prepared, especially after victory. Jesus' temptation comes immediately after being baptized, immediately after having probably a, a victory, you know, the, the, the awesomeness of, of being baptized by John the Baptist, he, he's hit, with these temptations. The Bible tells us the enemy only comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And so what better time to rob you of your joy than after a victory in your life when you've overcome something, right? Maybe you are you let your guard down a little bit because you're excited. And so be prepared, especially after victory. Be, f be filled with the Holy Spirit. The first thing the writer tells us in this, in this chapter is he was full of the Holy Spirit. Galatians 5.16 says, But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Having the Holy Spirit doesn't mean you and I are void of temptation. It doesn't mean that we don't experience it. What it means is that we don't have to give in. We don't have to gratify ourselves. 
And then the next thing is this, be armed with scripture. It's real simple, right? Every, every time he's tempted, Jesus quotes a scripture to Satan that refutes what he's saying. It points out the error, as we talked about before, it points out the error in what Satan's telling him. And so again, you version and uh, scripture, just trying to read, you know, the verse of the day, doing those things, memorizing that. Maybe it's as simple as Googling scriptures with dealing with fear or anxiety. And maybe you write it down, you put it on your dashboard, you put it on your mirror so that you can see it, you can memorize it. You, it's a reminder to you, but, but be armed with scripture. And then finally is this, be ready for further attacks. The final verse in that passage says, and when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. Jesus' triumph over Satan in this passage isn't final. Making it through this time may give you a victory in the moment, but Satan will step away, biding his time, finding a new way to attack. And so, again, be ready, be prepared, all those things. And as we're in this time of constant changing, I would encourage you that if, if Jesus, the Son of God, can be tempted, what makes you and I even better? That's something that I felt God was telling me. Like if, if Jesus wasn't immune to it, then neither are you or how much more susceptible are you to that, to temptation. And so I would just encourage you as we see how Jesus dealt with this to, to apply that through this time, to, to, to follow those things and, and, and make sure to, to not just fill the, the, the downtime with just mindless things, but to really focus on God and trust in him. Really quick, I just want to pray with you um, before we end tonight. Um, and we just want you to know if you need anything, please let us know. Call the offices, um, talk to the secretaries, messages, comment on our Facebook group or Facebook pages and, and let us know what you need. Don't forget we have the food pantry that's open on Tuesdays in Gentry. If you would like to call and set up an appointment, we would love to help you there. But let's just pray real quick. Dear Lord, God, we love you. God, we thank you so much for the opportunity just to continue to, to gather together, even if it's online, Lord. And I just pray that as we read this passage tonight, God, we would begin to apply it to our lives. Lord, that we would look to you and follow Jesus' example of dealing with temptation, that in this time when we may be more susceptible than usual to, to temptations and, and, and other things, God, that we would look at the example that Jesus set for us. God, that we would, we, we would be ready, we would be armed. God, we would just meditate on your word, God, and just take this time to draw closer to you, God. Lord, we love you, we praise you, and we thank you. Amen.